Very little's known about how enamelling was done in Rome and Britain, so we've decided to try and make an exact copy of this brooch. This is a hare, not a rabbit. We know that because rabbits weren't introduced until the Norman Conquest, although it does look very rabbit-like. Taking up the challenge are bronze smith Andrew Lacey and local jeweller Guy Moray. Guy's first task has been to make a pattern from lead which will be used to create a mould. The lead pattern's slightly bigger than the original guy. Yeah, that's because that when the metal cools it will shrink. So if you want it to be the right size, it has to be a little bit bigger. No, you won't. it's quite tough stuff, actually. Guy's using cuttlefish bone for the mould. Well, so that's completely together now, yep. all round. Then you just take it apart. Take it apart. Open it. Oh, it's amazing. Goodness, the detail's so good. You can see every little sort of line you've carved yeah. it. It's fantastic. Yeah. And now, this is a technique the Romans would have used, Yeah, is it? sure, it's very, very old. In our workshop, our bronze mixture, made up of 90% copper, 7% tin and 3% lead, is ready to be poured into the cuttlefish moulds. We're hoping to get at least one decent replica Roman brooch to enamel tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no! Which means we can't afford to spill any. <laughs> Five minutes later, and it's clear the furnace wasn't hot enough. The bronze has solidified before reaching all parts of the mould. The solution? Add more tin to lower the melting point, allowing the liquid metal to fill out the tiniest details of our hair. No idea what's happening. Oh, that's fantastic. Look at that. So ears, eye, front paws, back paws. Yep, we're just going to have to chisel those away. Meanwhile, Stuart's fascinated by an engraving depicting the Isle of Wight. Got this really nice engraving here, which was done in 1545, showing the view from Portsmouth towards the Isle of Wight over here. And there's, there's the Mary Rose That's sinking it in the right? water there. But if you look at the Isle of Wight here, this is the, the entrance to what is now Benbridge Harbour coming round here. And in fact, you can see it shows boats oh, yeah. right round the back of, of this our site is here, so even at that date, this was open water all the way around towards the back of the site. Looking at the same view today, this whole area has been reclaimed, but it once formed a very big natural harbour. Our site is situated on what was effectively an island, separated from the rest of the Isle of Wight. Our attempt at enamelling will take place tomorrow, but first we have to create some glass using silver sand, and soda lime. A little bit of this. Some okay. of that, a little bit Some of that. Some of that, a little bit of this. In this case, malachite, a copper mineral, will colour it. Okay. Have you done this before? Um, not quite <laughs> like this. So you really don't know if this is going to work? No. So we've just got to let them cook for a while now. Enamel is essentially made up of ground glass, so this has got to work. Ooh, just at the treacle tart stage. So this is one, like, leave it overnight, maybe. Yeah. If we put the lid on just for a little bit. <laughs> in our Roman workshop, today's the day when we try to enamel our Roman brooch, and for that we need some newly created coloured glass. But, uh, let's grab this one. Hey, look at that. You oh, see the copper heavy. on the surface there? What, the pinkish stuff? Yeah, the pinkish. It's bright That's pink. copper metal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, just appeared spontaneously. That's it. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? That's um, a strange sign. That's not necessarily what we want. So you, ah, see how this is green on the underside? That's actually that, the glass from the pot coming through the crack. That's it. It's just, just leaked all the way in. That's a nice greenish colour, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. So how do we get it out? Oh! It's not quite as glassy as we hoped, is it? Best bit's leaked out, isn't it? Oh, look oh, at that. Wow. That's fantastic. That's the most beautiful yeah. colour. This is very much a question of trial and error. We don't know quite how these colours will change once they're heated again. Adding cobalt to our blue glass should give us a deeper colour. How's that, Andrew? Guy is finishing off the actual bronze brooch by trimming off the waste metal and drilling the hole for the pin using a type of drill used in Roman times. How long is it going to take? 30 seconds to a minute, maybe. Oh, wow, so you can just sit and literally watch it go. Yeah, just watch it. It will darken and then become glossy. It's tricky because the different colours have to be added in stages, some colours requiring longer in the furnace than others. 
Oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. Look at that. That still needs to, a bit more to go glassy, doesn't it? Yeah, but that's the first firing. Ooh. Andrew, are you pleased with it? Oh, I'm so chuffed with it. That's great. I mean, yesterday you were very complimentary <laughs> about the craftsmanship <laughs> of the Romans, and I suppose I'd better be complimentary about your work now as well. <laughs> oh, look at that. Hey! Isn't that beautiful? That's unbelievable. The colours are just so bright, aren't they? That is 15 out of 10. Yay! <laughs> it's turned out brilliantly, and it makes me appreciate how good the other bronze finds must have looked when new.